Do violent video games make for violent kids? The violence is spilling over into real life. Created a desensitized culture. Dodge this. A new study finds a link between violent games and aggressive behavior. To keep their kids away from Squid Game. Welcome back to Bear It In Mind. This video is going to explore the social learning theory in psychology, including the famous research of Albert Bandura. This video is part of a series looking at the topic called Approaches in Psychology. Each of these approaches explains human behaviour from a different perspective. Social learning theory is one part of what is known as learning theory, the other part being the behaviourist approach which we have covered in other videos, all linked below. For social learning theory you need to understand all of the following on the screen. This first video on social learning theory is going to explore Banjura's Bobo doll studies. The next video will look at each of the features of social learning theory and the third video will evaluate social learning theory in terms of its strengths and limitations. In the 1940s and 1950s, behaviourism was the dominant view of learning with the work of Ivan Pavlov and B.F. Skinner. And into that view, Albert Bandura argued that some behaviours are too complex to simply be explained through the stimulus and response associations of classical conditioning and the rewards and punishments of operant conditioning. Bandura agreed with behaviourism on the influence of the environment in learning. However, he argued that much of our learning can happen indirectly through the observation of other people. Don't forget the nice wrist movement we've been practicing. Mm. The swish and flick. The swish and flick. An area that particularly interested Banjura was aggression. He wanted to explore the questions of how children learn aggression and violent behaviour, and what factors would keep them behaving that way. This led Banjura to conduct his famous Bobo doll studies. And I warn you, this is going to get violent. Banjura's research has become known as the Bobo doll experiments because they involved, unsurprisingly, a Bobo doll. This was an inflatable clown that was weighted at the bottom so that when it was hit, it would return upright. Let's consider three of his Bobo doll experiments. The first original study was conducted in 1961. 72 children from a local nursery school were involved in the study. These children were aged approximately between three and five and a half years old, and there were 36 boys and 36 girls. These 72 children were divided up into three groups for the different conditions of the study. So 24 in each condition, evenly split with 12 boys and 12 girls in each. It was a match pairs design as each child was rated by their nursery teacher in terms of how aggressive if their behaviour typically was, and then matched with a child of similar aggression. Well done Banjura for some quality research methods design. Match pairs designs are a great way to control the extraneous variable known as participant variables. The child was shown to one area of a room by the experimenter where there was a small table and different toys and activities for them to play with, such as designing pictures with prints and stickers of animals, flowers and different shapes, a task the children were used to from nursery school. Once the child had settled into the activity, the adult model was then brought into the room in the opposite corner where there was a range of different toys that included a bobo doll, a mallet and a toy set. For each condition, half of the children observed a model of the same sex, while the other half observed a model of the opposite sex. Experimental condition 1, observing aggressive adult models. In this condition, the adult model behaved in aggressive ways. This included the adult tipping the bobo doll over on its side and punching it repeatedly in the nose. They picked up the mallet and hit the bobo doll on the head, and for good measure, then tossed the bobo doll up in the air and kicked it about the room. They were also verbally aggressive, with phrases they repeated such as Sock him in the nose Kick him And my personal favourite, POW The adult behaved this way for 10 minutes. Experimental condition 2 observing non-aggressive adult models. In this condition, the adult played with the toys, but demonstrated none of the aggressive behaviors that were in condition one. Once again, the adult behaved this way for 10 minutes. And then in condition three, there was a control group. No exposure to any model, they just went straight to the second room to play with the toys. Having observed the adult model, the children in conditions one and two then left the room and went to a waiting room where there were some highly attractive toys. And in this waiting room, they experienced what was called mild aggression arousal. In other words, the adult experimenter did something that would provoke some level of aggression in the children. So what did they do? 
The experimenter explained to each child that the toys in the new room were for them to play with, but around two minutes later, as soon as the child became involved with the toys, the experimenter told them that these were her, quote, very best toys, and that she did not let just anyone play with them, and that she had decided to reserve these toys for the other children. I don't know if you've ever seen a child have a toy taken off them, but can you imagine the child's outrage at such a thing? However, after the mild aggression arousal, the experimenter then took them to the second room where the child was told that they could play with any of the toys in that room. The children were then left in the room to play with the other toys for 20 minutes and their behaviours were carefully observed through a one-way mirror. Here's what they found. In condition one, with the aggressive model, the child did exactly what they saw the model do. Aggressive behaviour all over the place. And if you don't think girls are aggressive, check this girl out. She's using a baby doll as the weapon. I told you this was going to be violent. I do like how she stopped for a cup of tea halfway through though hard work being this aggressive. They not only imitated many of the aggressive behaviours they observed the adult model do, but also carried out other aggressive behaviours against the Bobo doll that they hadn't seen the model do. Now let's consider condition 2 and the control group. In contrast, children in condition 2 and the control group who observed a passive non-aggressive model, and in the case of the control group no model at all, rarely if at all demonstrated any physical or verbal aggression. Overall this study demonstrates the powerful influence, particularly for children, that observing adult models can have on their learning of new behaviours and raises serious concerns about the implications for what children pick up from watching aggressive behaviour. To keep their kids away from squid game. Interestingly, the sex of the model played an important role too. They reported, quote, male participants exhibited more physical and verbal aggression and engaged in significantly more aggressive gunplay following exposure to the aggressive male model than the female children. This points to the significance of same-sex models in the learning of observed behaviour. In Banjura's first study, we looked at how children imitated the observed behaviour of an adult who either behaved aggressively or non-aggressively. With the continued development of technology and the exposure to different models via television, Banjura conducted another study in 1963. He decided to investigate the extent to which aggression observed on film would be imitated. Do violent video games make for violent kids? This study was very similar to the setup of the previous study, but this time had four conditions. Condition 1, real life aggressive models. This was just like the original study. The adult model entered the room and after playing for a little while, then started to behave aggressively towards the Bobo doll. Condition 2 film of aggressive models. This condition was exactly the same as condition one, except this time the children observed the aggressive adult model on film rather than in real life. The adult behaved in exactly the same way as they did in condition one. Condition three, cartoon film of aggression. This condition was the same as condition one and two, except that this time the film was a cartoon of a cat who carried out the same aggressive behaviors as the human models did. For conditions 1, 2 and 3, the children then went to the waiting room, like the original study, where they experienced mild aggression arousal before being taken to the second room. Condition 4, control group. These children had no exposure to the aggressive models, they just went immediately to the second room. This second room was filled with the toys, and their behaviour was observed in the same way via the one-way mirror. The children again played for 20 minutes, and their aggressive behaviours were recorded. So what do you predict they found? Who would you expect they would imitate the most? Here are the mean number of aggressive behaviours of the children for each condition. Condition 1 with the real life model, 83. Condition 2 with the film model, 92. Condition 3 with the cartoon model, 99. Condition 4 with the control group, 54. 
Once again, the study demonstrates how when children are exposed to aggressive models, it increases the probability that they will respond aggressively when another occasion arises that instigates it. And this not only happens with a real-life model, but via models observed through film, both human and cartoon. Now, you might take those results as suggesting that an aggressive cartoon character actually has more of an impact on children than a real-life adult. However, statistically speaking, there was no difference between these conditions. What is important is that if a child observes an aggressive film or a cartoon character, it has the same influence as an aggressive real-life adult. This study confirmed the extent to which the medium of television can have on shaping the learning of behaviour. Additionally, the sex of the model once again played an important role. The boys who had observed a female adult model be aggressive were more likely to simply sit on the Bobo doll without punching it than the boys who viewed the male adult model be aggressive. This again points to the significance of same-sex models in the learning of observed behaviour. And a third study to consider was Banjura 1965. This study was again somewhat similar in design to the previous studies, but this time Banjura added a twist. Consequences. Each child was taken to a room with a TV. The adult experimenter said, quote, she had some business to attend to before they could proceed to the surprise playroom, and she appeared to randomly tune the TV into a TV program. Wait. Tune a TV. This TV program was five minutes long and was of an adult behaving aggressively to a Bobo doll, just like in the previous studies. It was what happened at the end of the film that was the twist. There were three versions of this. In condition one, a model reward condition, the child observed the aggressive adult model be rewarded for their aggressive behavior. Another adult arrived and appeared with a huge supply of sweets and called them a, quote, strong champion and that his, quote, superb aggressive performance clearly deserved a generous treat. And I love this next bit. The aggressive model was then poured a large glass of 7-Up. Now, in condition two, the model punish condition, this time towards the end of the TV programme, an adult arrived, shaking his finger menacingly and commenting, quote, Hey there, you big bully. You quit picking on that clown. I won't tolerate it. Then, as the aggressive adult model backed away, he tripped and fell, and the other adult sat on the model and spanked him with a rolled-up magazine while reminding him of his aggressive behaviour. The adult model who behaved aggressively to the Bobo doll then ran off, and the other adult was left saying, quote, If I catch you doing that again, you big bully, I'll give you a hard spanking. You quit acting that way. For conditions one and two, the children then went to the second surprise room after the ending of the film. Then finally, as per usual, there was a control group. They watched the same video, but there were no rewards or punishments at the end of the programme. They went straight to the surprise second room. So what happened when the children went to this surprise room? They found that children in the reward and control conditions imitated more aggressive actions than the children who saw the adult punished. In other words, even though the children had learned the behaviour through observing the adult model behaviour in both the reward and punishment conditions, they did not imitate the behaviour if they themselves expected to receive punishment if they did it too. They were less likely to imitate behaviour they had seen punished. This study developed our understanding of observational learning and demonstrated the significant influence not just of observing behaviour, but of observing the consequences of behaviour in others. So now that you hopefully understand something of social learning theory, bear in mind how much your behaviour may be being influenced by the adverts we're bombarded with each day and tactics they're employing to influence us. The influence that TV, movies, video games and social media have on children, particularly in relation to violent and aggressive behaviour still raises questions for psychologists today. What do you think? To what extent do you think that violence and aggression in children can be due to the observation of role models, whether that be in real life or on film? Or if you think it's a bit more complicated than that, what other factors do you think are important? For more on the other approaches in psychology, check out the link to the playlist in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.